ثم الصلاة والسلام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين ولعنة الله لا أدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاسب حقوقهم من الأولين والآخرين من الآن إلى كيام يوم الدين أما بعد سلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته Ibad Allah, Usi kum wa Usi nafsi bitaqwa Allah. Community of believers, servants of Allah, I advise you as I advise myself to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to act and implement upon wajibat, and to stay away from all those things which are forbidden and prohibited, which are haram, which are mad haram by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, according to Quran Majid, something which Quran has kept a criteria is taqwa. It says, Inna akramakum in the Allahi atkakum. There were so many people in history that maybe they came from different background. They were away from the from the personality of Rasulullah as far as their background is concerned. They were born in different peninsula, in a different place. But when they came to Rasulullah, when they became aware of Islam, and when they embraced Islam, they accepted Islam, they changed their attitude, they chose their way of life, the way Islam says, they became so close that Rasulullah had to say, As Salmano minna ahlul bayt. Salman is from us, he's from my family member. That is why the historians have named him as Salman Muhammadi. And yani Salman is from the family of Muhammad. And when the Ansar and Mahajir were fighting for Salman when they were digging the trench in the, before the battle of Ahzab and the Ansar was saying that because the idea of digging the trench was the idea of Salman al-Farsi so when the when this trench was being dug the Muhajir were saying that Salman is from us Salman is ours the Ansar was saying Salman is ours Rasulullah said as Salmano minna ahlul bayt Salman is from us. Why? Because that way of life, it was according to Islam. It was according to Sharia. In Islam, there is no discrimination. If, you, if we see you, the way of life is according to Islam, then even if you are black, according to Islam, even if you are black, you will, Rasul, uh, the Ahlul Bayt, the Holy Prophet of Islam, and his Holy Progeny, will welcome you warmly towards Islam. Like Bilal, he was black. People were complaining about Bilal. But wholeheartedly he was welcomed. Why? Because of his way of life. He, stu he, stood, uh, he stayed away from haram. And he acted and implemented upon wajibat. On the other hand, on the contrary, you will find that there were personalities who were very close as far as relation is concerned. To Rasulullah, like Abu Lahab, like Abu Sufyan, these were the relatives of Rasulullah. If you see their ancestors, if you see the family tree, they were close to Rasulullah, but the same people, because of their actions, because of their amal, Quran has cursed them. Quran bears witness about them. Like Tabbat Yada Abi Lahabin Watab, Ma Agnan Humal Hu Ma Kasab, his mal. And whatever he earned, it won't avail him. Quran curse Abu curses Abu Lahab. Quran curses Abu Sufyan. Araita Ladi Yukazibu Biddin, Fazalika Ladi Yadu Uliatim, Wala Yahuzo Allah Ta'amil Miskin. I said this in the past, I remember, that these verses were revealed for Abu Sufyan, that when he kicked off the orphan, he refused, he doesn't urge others to feed Miskin. Uh, the, the, these verses were revealed. Who about Abu Sufyan? So these were, as far as relation is concerned, they were close to Rasulullah, but Islam kicked them out. Islam said that we don't want these personalities. We, although those who come from different background, but if their amal is good, they've got amal saleh, we will welcome them in our, in our circle, in our fold. We will accept them. Like Nuh. Nuh had a son, Kanaan. He was the, Nuh was the biological father. And he was the son. And when Nuh complained to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's my son, 
Quran says, Innahu amalun ghayru salih. His amal is not salih. You will find that even today in media, a personality who passed away on Tuesday out of cancer, and he will be, today the funeral will be taken place today, uh, and the Iranian president, Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, has arrived in the Venezuelan capital, Caracas, to take part in the funeral ceremony of Venezuela's late leader, Hugo Chavez. He was a Venezuelan president. His background was completely different, but his attitude was so good, his actions were so good, that Islamic leader is calling him a martyr. He's called a martyr. Now, I'm, I, we, are, we can't decide for anybody. We can't place anybody to Jannat and Jahannam. No. Do not think us also that we will go to Jannat. It all depends upon our amal. If the amals are good, and then many people ask you, Asaro manas che? Asaro chokro che? I tell them that, brother, I can't guarantee myself also. That what will happen to me after 10 years? We should always pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that our akibat should be bakhir, that our end and destiny should be good. But you, no one can be trusted. This, person's, his, this person, his attitude was so good that Islamic leader says that because of his values, he calls him a martyr. The Iranian government also declared one day of national mourning for death of the late Venezuelan leader. And his people liked him so much, the people of Venezuela, that they declared seven days mourning. A leader could be a leader. Yes, he could be a leader. But there were so many leaders in the past that when they died, people became happy that it's good he died, like Saddam. But there were some leaders like Imam Khomeini, rahimallahu alayhi, that so many people, thousands of people, they came to the roads to join his funeral and they were weeping. Why? Because of their actions. This because he died in his message of condolence, Ahmadinejad writes to the Venezuelan government on Wednesday, Ahmadinejad called Chavez a martyr who lost his life in the path of serving the Venezuelan people and preserving human and revol revolutionary values. Heads of state from some 55 countries are scheduled to take part in Chavez's funeral. 55 heads have taken part in his funeral. If you lived good, you lived a good life, even in your funeral, you will find that people will participate. According to Imam Ali, salam, Imam Ali says that live in such a way that in your, when you are alive, people yearn for your company. And when you die, people cry for you. More than two million mourners have already filled past Chavez's body at a military academy in Caracas where he is lying instead. Venezuelan Vice President Nicolas Maduro, who is due to be sworn in, a, in an as acting president on Friday, that is today, has declared seven additional days of mourning. The South Amer American nation has already been in a seven-day mourning in the wake of the death of Chavez, who passed away on Tuesday after a long battle with cancer. Maduro also said, after the funeral, Chavez's body will be embalmed like Lenin, the Russian revolutionary leader, and put on display for eternity at a military museum. Chavez became involved in revolutionary movements within the armed forces in 1977. In 1992, he led a failed attempt to overthrow the government of President Carlos Anders Perez and was jailed for two years. Despite the fact that the coup failed, the incident launched, launched his political career. Chavez toured the country, electrified Venezuelans with his speeches, and won his first presidential election in 1998. So he served as a president in Venezuela for 14 years, since 1998. He also won presidential elections in 2000, 2006, and 2012. In 2002, a group of opposition politicians and troops staged a coup against Chavez. He was arrested and sent to a military base on a Caribbean island. However, 
Just two days later, the efforts of loyal military officers and massive demonstrations by Venezuelans swept him back to power. Yet many Venezuelans, they protested and they brought him back to power. Chavez founded the Bolivarian Revolution to establish popular democracy and economic independence and equitably dis distribute wealth in Latin America. He was one of the key players in the progressive movement that has swept across Latin America over the past few years. A'udhu billahi min ash la'in rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim wal asr inna al insana lafi khusr illa alladhina amanu wa amilu as salihat wa tawasaw bil haqq wa tawasaw bis sabr amanna billah wa sadaqallahu al aliy al azim أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وبه نستعين إنه خير ناصر ومعين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين شفيع المذنبين رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا وشفي ذنوبنا وهبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد ثم الصلاة والسلام على أمير المؤمنين وسي رسول رب العالمين علي بن أبي طالب والصلاة والسلام على بنت رسول الله فاتمة الزهراء سيدة نساء العالمين والصلاة والسلام على إمام المسلمين الحسن والحسين سيدي الشباب أهل الجنة والصلاة والسلام على إمام الرابع علي بن الحسين زين العابدين والصلاة والسلام على إمام الخامس محمد بن علي الباقر والصلاة والسلام على إمام السادس جعفر بن محمد الصادق والصلاة والسلام على إمام السابع موسى بن جعفر الكاذم والصلاة والسلام على إمام السامن والزامن علي بن موسى الرضا والصلاة والسلام على إمام التاسع محمد بن علي التقي الجواد والصلاة والسلام على إمام العاشر علي بن محمد النقي والصلاة والسلام على إمام الإهدى عشر حسن بن علي الزكي الأسكري والصلاة والسلام على إمام الإثنى عشر كائم آل محمد المنتبه 
Baqiyatullah khairul lakum in kuntum mu'minin Salu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Wa idh qala rabbuka lil malaikati inni jailun fil ardi khalifa Qalu ataj'alu fiha man yufsidu fiha wa yasfiku dima'a Wa nahnu nusabbihu bihamdik ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون in سورة بكرة verse number thirty it's a beautiful conversation of Allah سبحانه وتعالى with the angels which we we spoke about it last night in Thursday مجلس that when Allah سبحانه وتعالى said to the angels he did not do استخارة he did not ask advice from them although they gave the negative reply indirectly Allah just informed them that I'm about to create man on this earth. Remember the time, Quran says, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَائِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ And man is Khalifatullah on this earth. I'm going to create Adam on this earth. They replied, أَتَجْأَلُ فِيهَا مَنْ يُفْسِدُ فِيهَا وَيَسْفِكُ الدِّمَاءَ Are you going to create that personality, that entity, who is going to shed blood on this earth and facad on this earth? وَنَحْنُ نُسَبِّهُ بِهَمْدِكَ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ And we are there, already there. We are eulogizing you. We are doing your tasbih. Indirectly, there's no need to create men. They will, bled, they will shed blood on this earth. They will do fasad. Allah replied, إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ I know what you do not know. What did Allah mean? That I know what you do not know. Allah meant that if I will create men, I will create him for imtihan. I will create him for test and trial. Thus, any person, a hasib an nas, an yutraku, an yakulu amanna, wa hum la yuftanun. Quran says, what do men think? That if he says that he brought iman, then he won't be tested? It means he will be tested. Thus, any person who comes on this earth, it is imtihan he is giving. Be, he, he, be it a rich person, a poor person, a rich person also, he, he has got his imtihan for himself. A poor person has got imtihan for himself. Any person, he has got his imtihan. We said in first khutbah about the Venezuelan president. It was also imtihan for him. Hugo Chavez, who will be, who, who, whose funeral ceremony will be held today and who passed away on Tuesday. It was also imtihan for him. It is imtihan for everybody. And it is also imtihan for the Shias. Who are there? Where? Where about? Who are in Syria? Regarding them, the Russian Minister of Foreign Affairs, Russian Ministers of Foreign Affairs says, Lavrov, and what he says is very true. He says that it is absolutely no chance that Moscow pressures Syrian president to step down. He says, why should we pressure the Moscow Minister of Foreign Affairs says, why should we pressure that the Syrian president should step down? Because others pressure and they said that he should step down. He says that this is entirely upon the citizens of Syria. It is entirely upon the Syrians. They have to take the decision whether their leader should step down or not. Why should we take decision? He, he says that we have been against any preconditions to stop the violence and start the dialogue because we believe that the priority number one is to save lives. He says we should be more concerned about the bloodshed which is taking place in Syria. Which is very true. He says we should be more concerned about the mischief which is taking place in Syria. Why should we concentrate on the leader? Why, what does it concern us? We are not Syrians. It is up to them. They will decide who, to, who, be, who should become their leader. The Russian foreign minister added that those who say Assad must disappear before the start of any talks have a different priority than the lives of the Syrian people. For us, the priority is those innocent people. Lavrov retreated that it was only up to Syrian nation to decide who will lead their country unless we will act telling the parties, we don't want any military solution. We don't want any further loss of Syrian lives. That we want them to start negotiating in earnest. 
the crisis will continue and more blood will be shed. So many refugees, Syrian refugees, have flown. You must have watched the BBC shows in the middle of the week. The BBC was showing so many refugees have gone to Lebanon and different places to Jordan. The Russian foreign minister also called on the international community on January 10th to consider proposals made by President Assad for ending the crisis. On January 6th, Assad called for an end to terrorist operations inside Syria and urged concerned states and parties to stop funding, arming, and harboring the militant groups. They are being financed by Zionists. Zionists. They are being supported and trained. Those insurgents are being trained, according to Press TV. They are being trained by Saudi Arabia Salafis. And they have also, the Syrian authorities have also discovered that there are some devices in Syria, in a sensitive location, implanted that the, the device is called camouflage. You must be aware of camouflage. It is a creature where, wherever it stays, if it stays in a plant or in a green leaf, the, that creature becomes, it changes the color. It becomes green. That device is called camouflage. They have implanted that device in a sensitive location. And when it, the Syrian authorities say, and when it was tested, it showed, this, this was implanted by the Zionists. It showed that it gives the report, audio report and video report from that device. And when the comment, political politician commentator was asked, George, the person, George Jabur, was interviewed, he, this political politician, Syrian political commentator was asked, about this device, George Shabur, what is your reading into what has been now uncovered, what has been now explored, and that this spying device is by Israel? Jabur replied, well, this was expected. This is not strange to the practice of Israel. Of course, espionage is one of the tools of the continuing war between Syria and Israel, and as said, it is expected, but then, of course, we have to disseminate the fact that some of the opposition groups work with Israel. This is something that mi might come new to many Syrians. He says that the Syrians should know that the Israels, the Zionists, are helping these insurgents. The opposition groups, not all of them, work with Israel, but certainly some of them do. And this is a fact that is now rather well documented, and it should be disseminated, and the general public in Syria should know about it. And then he says, well, when he was asked, that do you think that there are more other operations and more devices and more plots being t taking place for Syrians? He says, well, I don't think that is strange if it is done, and I think it is done. As I said, enmity between Syria and Israel, an enemy will certainly, will certainly do everything he can in order to strengthen his position. His, uh, 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 and he is not considered an enemy. So it is clear that a weaker Syria means stronger Israel. As they say, that it is fair in love and war. Everything is fair in love and war. If you are in love with somebody, this is also hadith of Imam Ali alayhi salam in Najib Balagha. He says that if you love a person, then his defects will be hidden. And if you start hating a person, his good things will be hidden. Thus, there is an English proverb which says everything is fair in love and war. Because they are enemies, they could do everything. They could do anything they want. And another, another analyst says that Saudi ideology, because Salaf is also they also assist these insurgents. And why are they assisting these insurgents? What is the reason? Because Saudi Salafis, they are acting and implementing upon the ideology of Ibn Taymiyyah. And what is the ideology of Wahhabis? Salafism provide the militants in Syria with incentive to commit criminal acts to destabilize the region kill, what is their ideology? The ideology of Ibn Taymiyyah. 
kill all other except for those who accept Ibn Taymiyyah doctrine or Ibn Taymiyyah version of Islam. Thus, they, those insurgents are trained, supported, and financed by Saudi. They are just like Taliban and Al-Qaeda regime. Let us pray for all those Muslims, all those Shias, be it in Syria, be it in Bahrain, be it in Iraq, in the middle of the week, you must have heard about the Shias who were killed, who were martyred in Abbas town in Karachi. And the death toll was supposed to rise high. At, at that time, in the middle of the week, they mentioned that 56 Shias were killed. Innocent Shias were killed. So many, most of them, mostly children were killed. They were innocent children. They were killed. And the death toll was supposed to rise high. Even in the same time, simultaneously, the bomb was exploded in Karbala, in Iraq. At that time, twin bomb, twin, twin bomb was exploded. Let us pray for them. Let us pray for Bahrain. That may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promote peace in these places. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Allahumma ghfir lil mu'minina wal mu'minat. Wal muslimina wal muslimat. Al ahya'i minhum wal amwat. Tabi' baynana wa baynahum bil khayrat. Inna ka mujibu da'wat. إنك على كل شيء كدير وآخر الدعوان الحمد لله رب العالمين